Welcome to the morning worship service of First United Methodist Church of Starkville. Our weekly Sunday services are at 8.40 and 11 a.m., and our evening service is at 6 o'clock. Join us now as we come together to exalt Jesus Christ, our Lord. Good morning. What a thrill it is to be able to join you as we worship God together this morning. If you're a visitor, we give you a very warm welcome, and we encourage you to come back and, and worship with us often. Also, let me encourage you to register your attendance on the attendance pads that you'll find there in the pews. If you'll register your attendance and then pass it down and then back again, please. Uh, take the time to notice all the announcements in the bulletin. They're important to the life of this church. Hopefully they're important to you as we share together in ministry. Please take note that the Wesley Foundation luncheon day has been changed. It's Monday, June the 13th from uh, 11.30 to 12.30, uh, Monday, June the 13th. This is a, a good lunch, a good fellowship, a good opportunity to, to donate to a very worthy cause, the Wesley Foundation. Also, please keep in mind that uh, tickets to uh, People Get Ready, our summer show and dinner theater, will, are being sold uh, at present. You can get those after our worship service today. Remember, this is Saturday, uh, June the 18th. There will only be one show, so make sure that you get your tickets uh, early. This morning as we gather for Holy Communion, remember that uh, you don't have to be a member of this church to be involved. You don't have to be a member of this denomination. Um, also, as you come to the altar for communion, you'll be given the opportunity to uh, make a contribution to our annual conference special offering. Annual conference begins uh, this afternoon and goes this week. Uh, this offering will be used to establish the an office for uh, the Society of St. Andrews, uh, which is a, a mission group, uh, this office will be established at Wood Institute, and uh, this ministry gleans food, fruits, and vegetables from fields and, and make sure that they uh, get distributed to needy persons. So we ask that you'll give generously. You can uh, leave your offering on the altar or drop it behind the altar as well. We have a report from our mission team in the Philippines. They called this morning, all is well. Uh, they have uh, just recently been involved in a uh, consecration of a, a church there in the Philippines, a church that this congregation uh, helped to build. So we're very pleased in that. We encourage you to continue to pray for them. Also, when you're praying, remember uh, Gary and Jane Wyndham and their family in the death of Gary's mother, uh, Eugenia Wyndham. That funeral is this afternoon at 3 at Lena. Also remember the Herman Smith family. Uh, Mr. Smith passed away last week, a member of this congregation, also the father of Bob Smith. So remember them uh, as you pray.
Our hymn of praise is numbered 88 in your hymnal, Maker in Whom We Live. Let us sing together all stanzas and let us stand, please, as we sing. Almighty and eternal God, how good it is to come to your house today to join with others to worship you. And how good it is, O oh God, to share as we worship. We offer our praise and thanksgiving for the gift of your Son, Jesus. And Father, today we share with you our concerns, our fears, our burdens, as well as our many joys. And, and we come because this really is a sanctuary, a, a haven of peace, a place of retreat from all of life's pressures and demands. This sanctuary offers us a time to sit still and be quiet and hear you talk to us. And God, how we thank you for that. And today we pray for the Mississippi Annual Conference that begins this afternoon. We pray for Bishop Hope Ward Morgan, who will lead us for the first time. We ask for your grace, your wisdom, your spirit of renewal. And now, God, we thank you for the opportunity to give, to give of ourselves and to give of our resources. As we give, we dedicate ourselves and our lives and our resources to you. And this we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We turn our attention now to Scripture, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, beginning with verse 9. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. This is the word of God for the people of God. If you are like most people in, in life, you receive a lot of invitations, and they are of various types. Some of those are very, very specific, and some of them are quite vague. Some of them give you all the information that you could possibly need about the event that's coming up. Others you have to interpret. You may receive a dinner invitation, and all of a sudden you've got to decide, well, what are we supposed to wear? Is it formal, semi-formal? Can I wear shorts? Can I wear sandals? Can I go barefoot? Do I need to bring a dish? Well, can I just stop and get some bread or maybe some chips and maybe some Cokes? Or, or do I have to bring, worry about bringing a dish at all? You have to wonder and ask yourself, well, what about the children? Who's going to be there? Is anyone else going to have kids there? I wonder if they'll have a nursery set up where the kids can play together. Or what about the teenagers? Well, I don't know if we need to bring them or not. Should we take them along? You just you never know. You get invitations in so many different types of in, in, invitations, that, and so many of them need interpreting. You know, the best type of invitation that you can get is the one, or at least the, the kind that I like the best, is the one that says, come as you are. Just drop in any time. It's okay. Don't worry about bringing anything. Just, just show up. We'll be there. Don't worry. Just, just drop in any time. Yeah, and some of those I have received and... and I don't know that they've been meant. I mean, I've received those invitations from family, and I know those are well-intended, and I can stop in on family any time, and those are so wonderful. It's so nice to be able to, to stop in and visit someone and know that you're welcome, to know that there's food and to know that there's always room. Open invitations are always the best. In our reading this morning, there are many, many invitations for us to look at this morning. The first takes place as Jesus is walking along and an, an invitation is issued to Matthew, a tax collector, to become a disciple, to follow Jesus. Now Matthew is sitting there minding his own business at the tax booth. He's collecting taxes. Now this would not be a personal tax or an income tax it is presumed that what Matthew is doing is collecting a tax from people who are coming to town to sell their goods and to buy goods at market. The money, the proceeds from this would go to support the wealthy, the elite ruling class of the Jewish community. Matthew would have been required to collect a certain amount of money and that would have been passed on to those who received those funds. Anything over and above that would have supported Matthew and his family. 
So he had to collect a certain amount from those who he collected taxes from, and then there would be a little bit extra for his own time, for his own income, for his own trouble. It was a system that was set up for temptation, temptation to greed. The temptation would be to tax heavily so that you would be well off. Matthew was sitting there minding his own business, collecting the toll, and Jesus came up and issued the invitation. Immediately, Matthew got up and followed Jesus. In the next scene, they are sitting at table. Jesus is at the dinner table, and we're told that people just came in, sinners and tax collectors came in and were seated with Jesus and the disciples, and they were all eating together. Now, there's not a specific invitation issued here, but there seems to be an implied invitation to all of those who are around to come and eat with the Master. It was an open invitation. All were apparently welcome. We're told that sinners and tax collectors were there. The sinners, we're not sure exactly what that term means. I know we all have our concept of what a sinner is, but in this concept and in this context... It could mean a couple of different things. It could mean those who are outside of the will of God. It could mean Gentiles. It could be those who had transgressed the law and violated the law. It could also mean those whose very way of life was outside of the will of God or outside of Levitical law. For example, bankers who charged interest on loans, that was against Levitical law. They would have been considered sinners as well. But all were welcome. There were many, many there at the table with Jesus. All were welcome at the table. And while they're sitting there eating, we're told, we're told that a leader comes forth, a leader of a synagogue. Now, he comes into this mix. Now, we assume that he is a righteous person as a leader of a synagogue. He comes into this mix of sinners driven by desperation, his daughter has just died, and he's coming to Jesus because he wants to see her healed. This time, the invitation is issued to Jesus by the man, by the leader, and Jesus gets up with his disciples and follows him to his house. While they're on the way, there's a woman who has been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years, Surely she was an outcast. Surely no one wanted to have anything to do with her because contact with her would have made you unclean. No one wanted to be around her. There was no invitation issued for her. Maybe as, a as an act of desperation, she wanted to be healed, tired of being an outcast. She just needed healing. And so she touched the fringe of Jesus' cloak. As she does this, Jesus turns and she is healed. Our reading today is filled with many invitations. They do give us some indication of the general invitations that are issued by God and issued by Christ. A few things we can recognize this invitation of God, this invitation of Jesus, is open to everyone, to tax collectors, to sinners, to leaders, to those who are unclean. The invitation does not have to be merited, in other words. There just has to be a desire, a willingness to accept that invitation that is offered by God. Another thing we may learn is that this invitation is open to all, at all times, in all places. For Matthew, that invitation came while he was at work. I wonder what his bosses thought about that when Jesus asked him to follow and he just got up and left his tax booth. Mm. For Matthew, it was at work. For some, it was at the dinner table. For the leader, the invitation came as a result of a very desperate situation, the death of a child. For the woman, it was a chance meeting, a hope, an act of desperation.
It was an act of faith. All of these are open invitations. The invitation seems open to all who are in need. The leader came because his daughter was dead. When Jesus went into that house, he grabbed her hand. She, he grabbed the hand of a dead woman, a dead girl, and healed her. The woman who was bleeding, she was unclean, and yet she grabbed Jesus' cloak. An act that would have offended so many, many people because it would have made, made them ceremonially unclean. But it didn't make Jesus unclean. You see, Jesus healed them. And through that invitation and the acceptance of that invitation, they were transformed. Sinners were welcomed. Lives were changed. The dead were raised. And the sick were healed. Those same characteristics are available to us today in the invitation that God gives us. We're going to celebrate communion in just a few moments. And it is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to accept that invitation that is offered to us by God in Christ. Perhaps we need to issue an invitation to God, to Christ, for healing in our own lives. What we know is that this is an open table. What we know is that this is an open invitation. All are welcome. Danny said it so well. All are welcome. Won't you hear the invitation this morning? Won't you accept the invitation this morning? I've got to warn you as you come around this table this morning, there will be sinners there. There will be clean and unclean. But all are welcome. Won't you come to the table today? Won't you hear the invitation? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Let us join in our confession and pardon. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own goodness, but in your unfailing mercies. We are not worthy that you should receive us, but give your word, and we shall be with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you made us in your image to love and to be loved. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. By the suffering, death, and resurrection of your only son, Jesus Christ, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death and, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offerings for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, 
and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken in the you. This is the blood of Christ that was shed for you. This is the body, the blood of Jesus, broken and shed for you. Eat and drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you. The body, the blood of Jesus for you. The body, the blood of Jesus for you. The body, the blood of Jesus for you. Grace filled with his This is the body and the blood of Jesus for you. Eat and drink this in remembrance of Christ and I.
this morning is hymn number 430. O Master, let me walk with thee. Let us stand and we sing all stanzas. Could they come up front, please, right in this area? <laughs> Those families who are here. This represents some of the host families. Some of them are out of town this weekend. The children and the translator will be getting here, I understand, Saturday night, and that's when the adventure starts. <laughs> I said, these are most of the families that are, are hosting. Not all of them, though. Just so we bring them up front so that you can recognize them. Keep them in your prayers during this time, during this month. It's a wonderful opportunity. It's a wonderful, wonderful ministry. Keep them in your prayers. And I'm sure that you'll want to talk to them during the month to see how things are going. Let's lift them up in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this ministry. We thank you for the Children of Chernobyl Project. We thank you for the love that we're able to spread, the joy that we're able to share. Lord, we lift up to you these families as they prepare to host people from another country. Lord, some of the kids that are coming this time have not been here before, so it'll be a very new experience for them. It'll be a different one also for the host families that receive them. We thank you for that opportunity. We have several kids who are returning for a second year this time, Lord. We thank you for that chance to, to meet with friends, to meet with family. Lord, be with the children and the translators as they travel next week. It's a long trip. It's a dangerous trip. Lord, be with them and bring them here safely. Guide all of these families and speak through them. Be ministers of love. May they be ministers of your peace. May they be our ambassadors here in this place and time. And Lord, as we go from here, fill all of us. May we all hear and accept your invitation to discipleship, your invitation to service. Lord, we love you this day and we dedicate our lives to you. In the name of Christ, our Lord, amen. Amen. 